Hi, and welcome to the speaker series. My name is Ellie Weisbaum, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Toronto's Buddhism, Psychology, and Mental Health program. What you're about to watch is an excerpt from my course, Buddhist Perspectives on Current Social Issues, where we invited a series of international guest lecturers to share their perspective on how mindfulness and compassion can inform our approaches to current social issues, both at an individual and systemic level. This series was sponsored by the New College Initiatives Fund, and we really hope that these dialogues can serve to be engaging and informative for the context of your daily life, and that they can help us collectively consider how we can build a more healthy and compassionate society. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the video. Dr. Larry Ward is a senior teacher in the tradition of Thich Nhat Hanh and Plum Village. He brings 25 years of international experience in organizational change and local community renewal to his work as director of the Lotus Institute and as an advisor to the Executive Mind Leadership Institute at the Drucker School of Management. He is a passionate and engaging speaker. And we're delighted to share this video with you. So the first practice with the mind is to recognize the positive impulses that come up, the positive thoughts, the positive notion, the positive energies that come up from your deep consciousness and nourish those energies. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this for one, a couple of reasons. One is, and change, which we are in, in a way that is terrifying. Uh, to the status quo, whatever that may mean to you, is there are people who are early adapters in every change cycle. You know, people who got the iPhone first, people who got the new gadget first, people who went to see the new movie first, people who are tend to be first in their energy in trying out new things, learning new things, experimenting with new things trying things differently. They're called early adapters. And then you have people who are called late adapters. These are the people who got the iPhone after you did, after they talked to you and found out it worked okay. <laughs> or, what, or you went to a yoga class and they wanted to know how I, how I was. Uh, and they found out from you it was great and it was helpful. And so early adapter, later adapter, and the third kind of response is never adapter. And a never adapter is a person who gets meaning out of not changing. So not changing actually becomes the purpose of their life. Not cooperating becomes the purpose of their life. Not supporting becomes the purpose of their life. All their energy is directed toward stopping wellness, stopping justice, stopping peace. And this is true in all of us as individuals, but also collectively in society. Yeah. So know where you are and different changes, you might be different on the curve, right? Like I was a late adapter with the smartphone. I waited and waited and saw how other people did it. I studied all these different models and then I finally succumbed <laughs> to getting a smartphone. So I, in that case, I was a late adapter. But in terms of living around the world, I was working in different cultures and societies and institutions. I'm early adapter. You know, first person to go to college, first person to be on an airplane in time to my family, uh, first person to leave our city. And that may be also in your roots. You may be a first. Uh, if you are, reward yourself, celebrate yourself because you open up a new way for even people you will never meet. Understand your power for being first. 
or second or third. It's not that the number is important. I'm talking about the mind of adaptation. So know how fast or slow you are to make a change in your life, in your habits. And of course, some habits are harder than others, but I wanna focus on our social habits. We have a society that we've constructed that now is in charge of us and we are not in charge of it. Case in point, one person, according to what we understand, made the decision to start a war in the world. No one person, this is what's new in our consciousness. I hope we were coming to it. No one person should have that possibility. Anywhere. We are, what's emerging in our ecological movements, in our land movements, in our justice movements, in our cultural rights movements, uh, is a new understanding of what it means to be human on this planet and how we are human together on this planet. And that's the invention of this moment that we are in. And you know, I get a lot of academic stuff every day. I study and read and news and other kinds of magazines and articles and reports. And um, just yes, over the weekend, thousands of women in Mexico City were marching against femicide. But that's also true in Guatemala, in Peru, in India. The emerging world, I don't have the correct language yet, but I'm working on it. The, the, the emerging world, the new world that we are waking down to on the earth, in our bodies, in our streets, in our schools, in our neighborhoods and villages and homes, the world we're waking up to on the ground values life, values care, values respect for one another. And by one another, I mean of all manifestations of life on our precious planet. So nourish the very best in you of yourself. Things every day, don't take a break from nourishing yourself. Because as you do that, this connects back to resilience. You end up, in my language for it, it's like I have a bank of resilience in my body. So I am not a person who jumps like a monkey at everything that happens. We have, oh, excuse me, or a new puppy. We have a new puppy who, <laughs> if you had a puppy, you know, they jump at every little thing. So we're training our minds not to simply jump or simply obey our habits socially. Example, when my wife and I bought our first house, uh, we went to the closing process and uh, I, of course I read everything and I was reading over the final document and I found two things in the final document. First was a clause that said uh, they didn't have to, a covenantal clause that said they didn't have to sell that property to an African-American or any indigenous person. So I call that out. And then the second thing was, I as the man was supposed to sign, there's only my name. And I said, where does my wife sign? And they were like, well, that's the way we do it here. I said, well, not with me, you don't. I'm not playing that. So we have to change our habits, literally and very concretely. So we ended up with a different contract that my wife could sign as well as I. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you found it engaging and informative. If you'd like to know more about programming in the Buddhism, Psychology, and Mental Health program or other public series and events that we have coming up, please check out in the description a link to our website and also more about the speaker in this video. Thanks for joining us.